A lot just happened in a short amount of time in this body cam breakdown. That was an intense video and we're gonna break that down. But before we do, we wanna thank our sponsors, TacOps. Go to tacticalconference.com, get signed up for one of the three conferences a year. Mark and I will be at the, each uh, trade show in, in 2024. We hope to see you guys there. And Kyle and I are excited to announce that we partnered full-time with the Savage Training Group as instructors. We're gonna be teaching patrol survival tactics across the country. We got four dates coming up. December 12th, Newport Beach, California. January 29th, San Pablo, California. February 19th, Williamsport, Pennsylvania. And March 4th, we'll be in Frisco, Texas. If you wanna get signed up for that class, go to savagetraininggroup.com, get registered, and look at the additional classes that they offer. Okay, so we just saw a video out of Mesa, Arizona with the U.S. Marshals Task Force trying to apprehend a suspect wanted for three armed robberies all occurring within hours of each other. They found the suspect. They tried to apprehend him. He pulled a gun, and from there, all hell broke loose. Let's talk about it, break each part of this down. There's a lot involved in this video, even in a short amount of time. All right, so let's talk about why these guys are there. They're there to apprehend this guy who's wanted for multiple armed robberies. He needs to be caught. He's obviously dangerous. A lot of times these robberies that occur within a short amount of time of each other, sometimes these things end up in shooting. So this guy is dangerous. He needs to be taken off the street. You guys can see in the camera footage that it says the camera angle is from the real-time crime center. What that is really quick is you have cities investing in all these cameras now, such as Flock, that... You have individuals at a police department who can actually view those cameras real time. So when crime is occurring, they can either get officers there immediately or they can follow these cars or people away, utilizing the cameras, follow them until an officer catches up with them and be more proactive in, in some of these crimes that are occurring instead of reactive. What I really like about this takedown car is the setup. In the front passenger seat, you have the lethal cover. This is kind of your overwatch and behind directly behind him in the right rear passenger seat. You have the officer with a less lethal shotgun and a flashbang in his hand. When they pull up to the car, he deploys the flashbang, which is a distraction to, to kind of disorientate the suspect. There's a little bit of smoke, but not too much. It's outside. And then you could see the suspect attempt to grab a gun and turn towards them. And that's when he follows up with a few less lethal shotgun rounds. Then the gun jams and he's trying to work through that, but he's not able to, to actually fix the, uh, the, the, the jam. Yeah, and I, the, the guy that's on rifle that's in the front seat, he, obviously he's got a super, probably one of the most crucial roles in this whole thing because if that guy does pull a gun, which he does, he has to be the one to follow up with lethal shots, and he's in a moving vehicle, so that is uh, hard to do. Uh, however, he does accomplish that. You can see he does hit the suspect. He kind of wobbles a little bit doesn't go down immediately. So he actually follows up with one or two follow-up shots, which ultimately does put the suspect down. So the guy's trying to clear the shotgun uh, jam. He, he's unable to do it. His partner does a great job, sees he pulls a gun, shoots him. Now, the car behind them in a truck and an, an another unmarked truck comes pulling up onto the lawn. And the only thing that we wanted to cover on that was just, if you're going to pull up on, you know, different type of terrain, grass, rock, gravel, whatever. Obviously those things can be slippery. And if you're going to pull up fast like that and you slam on your brakes, there is a high likelihood you're going to skid, you know, potentially could crash. And it did kind of put him in the crossfire of the guy with the rifle. But I would say the guy with the rifle did an outstanding job of probably recognizing that he stopped shooting and engaging. 
Uh, these guys then get out of their car. They take cover behind their car and they didn't immediately rush up to the suspect after they shot him, which Mark and I talk a lot about when we're teaching our classes. If you guys are going to be involved in a shooting, we do advocate not running up and immediately uh, trying to d- uh, detain the suspect. Uh, you don't know if they're lying in wait or what their capabilities still are, and you don't know how bad they're actually injured. So we like the fact of using your cars as cover, come up with a game plan to make that approach, whether it's a shield, using uh, patrol cars or any type of car if you can to make that approach. But these guys did an outstanding job of communicating with each other. They were not jacked up. They weren't yelling. They obviously uh, maintained their composure even after everything that just happened. And they literally were like assigning roles to each other so that there was absolutely no way nobody there didn't know what they were doing. Yeah, the communication that I watched on these cameras were phenomenal. Physically, one of the officers was touching the other one, assigning him a role. So they're like you said, there's no doubt that they they were mistaken in what their roles are. But I don't want to forget about the driver of the takedown car because it may seem easy to drive, but it's really not. There's a lot you're thinking about. He's got to operate the siren. He's got to watch traffic. And he's got to be easy on the gas and brake because if he slams on the brakes, he's throwing the two other officers forward in the car, which they're trying to take accurate shots. So I I do want to give the driver credit for doing a good job slowing and controlling the car, not slamming on the brakes and skidding to a stop. Yeah, so then you have the guy laying there. They, they don't know how bad he's injured. And he you guys do see in this video, he does some follow-up shots with the beanbag shotgun. Oh, this one, I think oh, hands out! That's all done by design. That's a tactic used to, um, you know, shoot somebody with a less lethal device to see what type of reaction you get out of them if they've been shot. Um, you, that way you can tell if somebody is lying in wait, right? If you get some type of inadvertent reaction from them, you know that they're still, A, still alive, and B, that they could be a threat to you. If you don't get any type of reaction from them and you shoot them again with a less lethal object, then there's a high likelihood that that person is either critically injured or possibly deceased. They then make their approach and immediately one guy goes for the gun. He calls it out. He says, hey, his finger's on the gun. I got the gun. Watch out, fingers on the gun. His partner pulls it from him. They get it away from the scene and they put it up on the rock wall to, to render it safe. Overall, I think these guys did a really good job. I mean, that's that there, there is a lot involved in that short amount of time that that happened. And I thought they handled themselves very well. Like you said, I thought the driver of the cars did a very good job. Uh, I thought the guy operating the rifle, that's an outstanding shot. He's in a moving vehicle. He's got to be concerned about his backdrop. It's the middle of the day. There are, you know, people out and about driving around. Uh, there's a lot to take into consideration. And I think when you add all that up with everything that they had trying to take this guy into custody as safely as possible, I thought they had a really good plan. I mean, they didn't just that, that they didn't just do that on a whim. I mean, they obviously that was calculated on their part. They talked about it. They had that step-by-step in a plan. They executed it, and I thought they did a good job. Yep, I think they did a really good job, too. The Mesa Police Department, working in conjunction with U.S. Marshals, that's a team that works tight-knit. You can tell they communicate very well. I like the setup of the car, the takedown car. I like the surveillance of the of the camera system. I really like the communication between the officers physically touching the other one, assigning it. And I do like that once the officer deployed the less lethal shotgun, he had the wherewithal and the controlled mindset to reload as they're waiting because you may need additional rounds. Overall, the department should be proud. I think those officers did a great job working together. Nobody else got hurt. None of the officers got hurt. And really, that's all you can ask for. That's going to be it for today's body cam breakdown. We'll catch you guys on the next one and we'll see you guys later. See ya.